Look at that bird over there, it's huge. That's a loon or something. Hi, I'm Ryan F9. Today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about myself. I'm gonna be doing it on this. I'll flip the camera and we'll get like, switch to the shot of the bike. But I'll keep my helmet on with the GoPro so you'll be able to see sort of like behind the scenes as I'm shooting with 70D. Um, so Hi, I'm Ryan F9 and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about myself. I'm gonna be doing it on this. It's a BMW G310R, and I have four main impressions of it. First, I think it looks bloody gorgeous. And I took this thing down to the docks because it looks like the type of bike that a person who owns a yacht might ride. It's beautiful in my opinion. It looks awesome. But it sounds, however, <laughs> awfully bad. My second main impression, That, that is an annoying sound. Steve, when I'm riding this bike today, every time I rev it out, I just make it sound like something other than what it is. Bubbles, Lamborghini, anything, because it would be better if it sounded like anything other than that. Third main impression is that it's an awesome bike to sit on, and these wings on the tank come out over top of your knees. You interface right in the bike. So it's a lovely bike to sit on, and then the fourth main impression is that it's not that lovely of a bike to ride. It sort of feels like you're riding something built in India by TVS, and of course, you are. Anyway, let's get to it. Fortunately, this bike is very quiet near idle. It's only when you rev it up that it starts to sound loud and awful. It has this rattle in the exhaust. It sounds cheap. You didn't just stall in front of everyone, did you? No. I've actually never stalled a bike as much as I've stalled this one over the last week. I don't know what it is with the gearing or the torque or whatever, but I've been stalling this thing non-stop. That just doesn't sound good. Oh yes, yeah, so that sounds better. So today's vlog is a lot about myself, and to be honest, it wasn't planned that way. Um, I got to return this BMW, it's a press bike, got to take it back to Toronto. And so I had planned to do a vlog on tips and tricks for like long highway rides, long days in the saddle. And that would have been very useful. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't get the script done in time. Um, because we were too busy making the review of this, which is killer. So if you want to see a good review, boom, link down below. Um, anyway, so I'm winging it out here today, and when you're gonna wing it, you're gonna talk about yourself, uh, because that's easy. And who are we kidding? I'm a narcissistic bastard. I was, hell, I was gonna talk about myself anyway. Uh -huh. I could show you all these comments of people that ask questions about me, but psh, as if I need those. I love talking about me. Uh -huh. The other thing I'll clear up, because people ask this and I kind of find it funny, um, A, yes, my name is Ryan. B, no, my name is not Ryan F9. It's just Ryan. And C, my last name is not Fortnite. Um, I keep meeting people and they're like, hey, it's Ryan Fortnite. And I'm like, eh, kind of. Uh, not, not quite, but kind of. I guess I should probably start in the very beginning. So the first half of my childhood, I grew up in Saskatchewan. Oh yeah, bud, I'm from Saskatchewan, eh? Uh, Saskatchewan's where I got into power sports. Not motorcycles, snowmobiles. Because when you're five years old and the year is 1990 something, if you have a snowmobile, you can ride it. No one's gonna stop you. Um, it was lovely and free back then. Of course, this wasn't the intense avalanche, long track, mountain sledding. Hello, he thought I was just doing the weirdest wave in the world. Um, this is the short track, prairie dog, bombing around in minus 40, just trying to stay alive type of sledding. Uh, but it was enough to get me really into uh, power sports. So when we moved, my family moved to British Columbia, which is where I spent the other portion of my upbringing, which a lot of you probably know because I mention it here and there. Um, you know, my backyard was a mountain with a beautiful forest in it, which is kind of most people's backyards in British Columbia. Um, it's beautiful out there. So, of course, I got into trail bikes. And I got, we, you know, my, my friends built a motocross course. And we even toured a little bit. I mean, I was an 11-year-old who pestered his parents to get him a dirt bike. And then I, like, ripped that shit out to the next municipality and back. Um, you know, pulling like eight hour days on the saddle of an XR100. It was awesome. 
Um, and you could do all that on trails. So, so that's sort of where my love of power sports really came into its own. The way I got my license is kind of funny, actually. So my dad always had his motorcycle license. Um, so I kind of tried to talk my mom into it by saying, well, know, dad does it. Uh, but she wasn't really having that. So what happened was I got a job up at a provincial park in a national historic site. And my commute to work every day was like 10 kilometers up this really gnarly, like dirt road, very steep. It wasn't graded very often. And I was absolutely destroying my family Camry taking it up this hill. Um, and so I went to my mom and I said, hey, you know, if you let me get a license, I can take dad's dual sport bike up there and save the family car. And I'm only gonna use the motorcycle license just to go up the hill to work. And it's off road anyway, and you know, it's gonna be great. And she relented and let me get it. Of course, I was an adult at that time and I could have just got it anyway, but I mean, hey. That would have upset my mama, and everyone loves their mama, so I, I got permission. So that's basically my power sports background in a nutshell. Snowmobiles, and then trail bikes, dirt bikes, a little bit of motocross, um, and then I got into dual sports. So really, off-road is my bread and butter. You can probably tell based on the bikes that I choose to review most often. Adventure. Um, but uh, yeah, after that, it was, you know, street bikes and cruisers and tours, and I got into everything, but I really started on the dirt. The other thing that happened to me in BC is I met my wife. You know, people always say, hey, I didn't know 14 year olds could get married. And <laughs> that's very funny. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, not that I got married when I was 14, but I did get married pretty young to my high school sweetheart. And she's the best thing that ever happened to me. Aww. I'm sure Steve is gonna put a lovely little like, aww sound in there or something. Uh, yeah. I can just see the editing happening. I can just see it. Oh, that sounds great. So having been raised in Saskatchewan and BC, I decided to go east for university. Um, so I ended up in Montreal. You can probably figure it out. There are only two major Anglo universities in Montreal, and I went to the better one. Uh -huh. Now I'm just saying that to screw with Steve, because see, Steve went to the rival university, and I know he's going to hate that, so... Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, at university, did I study motorcycle journalism? No, of course not. Did I study mechanical engineering? No! Did I study content marketing? No! Nobody does anything relevant in university, so I did art history <laughs> and physics. Those are my two majors. So the moto vlog on painting in the Golden Age Dutch Republic and the moto vlog on quantum dynamics and its relation to relativity, um, you're gonna have to wait for those ones because they're coming out never. So I didn't go on in physics because I hated it after four years of university and I didn't go on in art history because usually that just means selling art to senior citizens with too much money, which is not really the reason anyone gets into loving art in the first place. Um, or you have to have a buttload of money to start with so you can afford all the internships that don't pay anything to get a job in a museum. Uh, so I didn't do either of those things. So I got a job as a writer because I did some writer. Uh, I did some writer. <laughs> I got a job writing because I did some freelancing in uni and the job writing was from Canada's Motorcycle. Uh, that was the name of Fort Nine about three years ago. And so they wanted to hire someone to do some ad copy to write some product descriptions to make a blog um, which I did you know if you're really interested in a failed blog I think it still exists on the deep dark corners of the interweb somewhere um, so I did that for a couple years and then I realized that making videos is so much cooler than writing because when you write something uh, you write something and that's fine but if you make a video you get to write a script and then you get to go do the thing you're writing about and when doing the thing you're writing about is riding motorcycles to cool places it's a no-brainer and so that's it I make videos for Fortnite. I'm lucky enough to have a company that's awesome enough to support me to do that while putting no requirements on what I say I mean they buy everything just so that I don't feel obliged to say something nice about a product if I don't like it um, they're very serious about integrity um, and about honesty, which I think is really rare in the motorcycling industry. Um, and that's something I'm going to talk about in the next vlog. Um, I don't want to do it here because being on a BMW press bike, I don't even want anyone to think that this is a specific issue with BMW because it's an issue with everybody. Um, 
and it's an issue that involves conspiracy and first class plane tickets and exotic locations and caviar and that's why every motorcycle review you read says the same shit and it's always super positive and in an article titled bike a versus bike b the conclusion will be motorcycles are awesome or something ridiculously unhelpful like that um so i'm gonna go on a rant about why motorcycle journalism sucks i'm not gonna do that now but uh suffice it to say that Fortnite is amazing at supporting a tiny little guy like me to just say some shit uh that it would be very difficult to say otherwise so it's a killer company to work for to clear the air i do not own the company i'm an employee um there are so many smarter people than me doing really intelligent things with e-commerce and web design and uh, filmmaking and tons of stuff. So there's a lot of people in this boat. Um, it ain't just me and it ain't just Steve, even though I bring his name up a lot. Um, sorry, Steve, you are on the boat though. You're on the boat. You're not the captain. You could be the first mate. At this point, I am running very late to return this bike. So I'm gonna head out. Um, Watch the review link beneath this video on this bike. It is killer. Um, come back a little while later if you want to hear that really uh, angsty rant on why motorcycle journalism is super biased and dishonest in 2017. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm out of here. Steve, make this downshift sound really good. I have got to get to Toronto.